Season 2 of The Halo Show has just been released with Episodes 1 and 2 out on Paramount Plus right now. I will not be going into spoilers with this review. We're here just going to be talking about the general flow and idea and is it better than Season 1? Because it has to be, right? I can't tell you right now because we are so scarred from Season 1. We know what happened within Season 1 and a lot of fans did not like it, right? It got not the best reviews, especially on Rotten Tomatoes. The gaming community at large was just shaking their head like, what did you create with this Season 1 thing? And so with season two being out, it's kind of in a way for them to have a fresh start with the Halo series. It definitely feels like that. Though it's not completely retconning everything that happened within season one, that still happened, but it's kind of like how they did with Halo Infinite, right? Where it's still a continuation of the story beats that were hit within the previous games, but feels like a fresh start. And that's kind of what they're doing with season two here. And so far, I gotta say from the first episodes that we've seen, it's good. I've, I'm, I'm liking it. One thing we have to talk about is like one, just like the intro of the show. They actually use Halo music, which is a big thing that was missing within the first season. It's just like that iconic Halo music, right? And we have people who made viral videos going online about singing the song because of how iconic that Halo theme is and to not have it within season one. It's mind blowing to me, but it's in with it's within season two though. It's here. But kind of touch back on about having this season two being a fresh start. It definitely feels like that. They definitely reference the things that happen within season one, but they kind of gloss over them or kind of go through them really quickly just to go like, okay, yeah, we, that happened. We got past it. Now let's let's go into this new season because season two takes place six months after the events of season one. They kind of just give enough time where you just kind of jump into a new experience. But to say that season two is already way better than season one, it's tough to tell right now because episode one and two are set up episodes. They're setting up plot points, setting up questions that are going to be answered throughout the season. So it's about how the writers and the team or, that made the Halo show for season two follow through with their setups and their plot points and really say if it's better than season one. But I will say season two is feeling more Halo-like than season one at the moment. So far, I'm really enjoying the new character, Akerson, as the head of Oni, or as he likes to say, the ONI, which really throws me off. As he's definitely a character that's there to help progress humanity in any ways possible which definitely very much in the theme of oni definitely a character that comes off as like being friendly to you for his benefit kind of thing i will say every scene that Akerson is in he kind of steals the show very similar to how halsey was back in season one while we're on the topic of new characters we have talia perez who we mentioned previously as well who's like a comms officer that we see within episode one and two and so far she's just kind of there at the moment right now as like more of a plot point rather than an actual character but we haven't really seen a whole lot of her within the first few episodes. So we'll see how her character develops. She will be a main character within this show. So we will see her more often throughout the season. But there's some interesting story elements that between Chief and Akerson and Talia Perez that are a little frustrating to me and we'll see how it actually kind of plays out but it kind of sets up this whole dynamic which I feel like is rather avoidable but maybe it's just there to create some more tension just have to wait and see how it plays out because like I said this episode one and two are all just kind of set up questioning and plot points and of course we have to talk about Master Chief as he's the main character of the show but I feel like what they're doing with this character within season two is kind of the right way to go about doing it because yes he's still a main character has plenty of screen time plenty of times with the helmet off but done correctly as every scene where he's out in the field or doing some type of thing that makes him have to wear power armor he's wearing the helmet as well there were so many times that we saw within season one with chief where he would have the helmet on with the power armor on and then as soon as he has a chance to talk he just takes the helmet off that's not really happening right now at least so far within season two which i think is the right way to go about doing it where when he's in more civilian situations like in mission debriefs and locker rooms and wearing civilian clothing like yeah not having a helmet on makes a whole lot of sense but when he's out in the field wearing the power armor you're gonna wear the helmet on because you're wearing while you're wearing the power armor it's because there's potential danger around you right and i touched on this in my podcast that i did recently where you need to wear the helmet often because that is like the face of master chief right because when chief is not wearing the helmet it just kind of loses that halo feel loses that feeling of it being master chief and feeling more like a guy just in power armor and i'm okay with him showing his face like i said like with the way they're doing it so far within season two makes a whole lot of sense 
sense. I will also say a chief is much more chief-like as he's much more focused on the mission and stopping the covenant rather than figuring out who his parents are and why he has feelings and things like that. Not that the story arc behind that isn't being touched on at all, but it's being played out through the other Spartans within the Silver Team as well, which I think is the right way to go about doing it. Even within the games, right? Master Chief really isn't much of a character. It really didn't happen to like Halo 4, maybe a little bit within Halo 5, and also a little bit with Halo Infinite, but mainly within that original trilogy of games, Master Chief really isn't much of a character. He'll say some one-liners, and that's about it. But what really pushes the story forward is the cast around Master Chief as they are extensions of him in some kind of way. So the perfect way to explore what it means to be a Spartan, how does it feel to be a Spartan, right? You do that through the surrounding cast, which is really happening with Riz and a little bit with Kai as well, which is the right way to go about doing it. Because I feel like the last person to get the memo that, hey, it's okay to cry as a Spartan would be Master Chief. I do want to say that the story arc with Soren at the moment feels really disconnected from what the main events with Master Chief are happening happening with right now. Kind of the same way we had like with Quan and Madrigal from season one that just felt like so disconnected and not really even relevant to what's the main plot point of the story is. So it'll be interesting to see if they find a way to connect Master Chief's story and Soren's story together for it to make sense where they can be mutually beneficial to each other. But right now at the moment with Soren and Quan, it's kind of like it's there at the moment and a lot of questions right now about the situation with Halsey and Cortana and what's going on with that so not a whole lot was really addressed that much within episodes one and two so we just need to watch more of the episodes within the season to really figure out like how those story arcs play out but so far with the setup of season one it's good I'm liking the scenes with Ackerson I'm liking the seasons with Cheens with Chief I'm liking the scenes with Riz and the rest of the cast like it's all feeling pretty good right now. I didn't really cringe, all except for one bit of dialogue that happened within episode two, where asking about like a kill death ratio. And I was like, uh, video game stats on a video game show. Just like, it's a little cringy, especially with skill based matchmaking, kill death ratio is an irrelevant stat now. But then that scene like quickly resolves into something that's actually kind of enjoyable. But is season two better than season one? It's tough to tell. Cause like I said, episode one and two are all just set up. It's three, four and five, I'm sure will be kind of the middle arc, the second act of the show and then six seven and eight episodes will be the conclusions so when it comes to figuring out if a show is better you need to see how these plot points play out to really see how they execute the questions and the plot points that are brought up within the beginning of the season so you can't tell if it's good right now but it is feeling better well of course i'll be having review videos after each episode so if you guys want to subscribe and follow along with us when it comes to the experience of the halo show as a halo community channel here well We'll have some opinions for sure. But thank you all for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.